Hey guys, and how's it going? So this video is gonna be a, oh, probably a little different than my normal ones, just wrenching in the garage. And it consists of me, so far, driving about 1,400 miles. I'm in a 2008 Toyota Sequoia. I did a bunch of work to it. Uh, water pump, hoses, belts, fluids, brakes, backup camera, that kind of thing. And it is going to my parents. My parents need a reliable car for them to tool around in. I was trying to find them a smaller one, like a RAV4 or something. And of course, everything that's going on, uh, cars are at a premium, let's say. Anyway, so I had this one as extra because my wife ended up getting an FGA Cruiser. This was her daily driver. And it was the FGA was supposed to be a toy, but she never uh, drove this ever again. So I offered it to my parents and they were more than glad to take it <laughs> so that's where this is going to them but where the fun kicks in is us gonna be dragging home a 1988 Volkswagen Vanagon Westphalia camper that I put together for them well I put it together about nine years ago they've had it for about eight years I dropped it off eight years ago has not had much maintenance they've been running it around but it does need a bunch of love that's not an easy vehicle to bring in and have somebody repair. It's just an odd vehicle. Parts are not easy to get for it, that kind of thing. And their regular driver, which is I think like a 2000 Camry, uh, 2007 Camry, is getting a little long in the tooth too. So they need a second vehicle that is reliable. So we're doing a trade. The adventure is gonna be driving the other one home. This I didn't expect much of an issue. It's a fairly reliable car. The other one, the brake pedal's almost to the floor. It's leaking coolant. It's leaking, uh, I think, transmission fluid and some other issues. <laughs> so I got some tools with me, some parts. I don't know what I do or do not need. We're gonna try to patch it up as best as possible and then make a journey going back the other way, the 1,400 miles into the snow. So uh, that's probably about, I don't know, six days away yet. Still gonna be visiting with my parents that kind of thing and whatever repairs I need to do and then we'll do a road trip so I'm not sure what's gonna be in the video but I uh, hope it's gonna be entertaining if not uh, you won't see it <laughs> how's that I think uh, we're probably gonna run into some stuff I have a feeling So by any chance, would you want to explain what happened to the dent on the side of the... Oh yeah. So right here, right here, here, yeah. And all... The window was down. <coughs> so you got home, you backed it in the garage. Backed it in the garage. My other car was alongside of here. I had this plug, apparently this way, in there. I couldn't get out that side, I had to come out this side. My leg hit it and pulled it down, apparently into neutral, and it started rolling out. I'm running after it. The window was down. I reached in to push it back up in the park and it got me this way and rolled me <laughs> against the other car, car and you can see the dent alongside of it. It took the back uh, handle off of it. It even took the mirror and pushed the mirror. So it started rolling out of the garage. The you car was right here. You tried jumping in through that window, put it back in park. <laughs> The other car was here. You got stuck between the two cars and it rolled you in between the right. two cars. Your body 
caused those dents yep. in I there. Built, apparently, because that would just, just be about where it would be. It rolled me around this way. And here's the car. We're going to look at the car. So this is you. Right. The, and even here, the, they rolled me here and it pushed me down this way. It took this handle off and it creased into here. And it had me. <laughs> so you yelled for mom. I yelled, Mom. And I yelled, No, no. <laughs> and she came out. She moved the mirror on the Volkswagen, pushed it in. That way I was able to wiggle out a little bit, just enough to get out. But you can see the crease is right into here, into here, and into here, and in this. And you went to the hospital, you thought you were dead. I thought I was, no. <laughs> <laughs> and they, yeah, it didn't look good. And you, and the only thing really you had, you broke a, broke a rib. rib. Yeah. But, uh, and how old are you? Huh? And how old are you? 84. <laughs> yeah. Soon to be 85. I'm going to be 85 April. Well, look at but, you. Uh, <clears throat> it was scary. Can you reenact that for me again so we have it on video just for... Uh, no, huh? Well, you do. <laughs> well, what I'll do is I'll back the car in. This way I'll put the crease on the other side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks like the, the torque converter is leaking. The what? The torque converter is leaking automatic transmission fluid. So that we'll have to kind of keep an eye on that. At some point, the, I got to take the engine back out and there's a seal back there that needs to be changed. Oh, oh okay. I don't see anything else. It doesn't look wet of any sorts, really. Yeah, it's, it, it, the, let's see how, many, how much water is in it. And how often do you have to deal with that? There's, no, there's, there's water in it? Yeah, there's water up to here now. So I, I got to go up to the cold. So I, we have to purge some of that out of there anyway and get some antifreeze in it because it's going to yes, freeze on right. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that still needs to be addressed. But Good. Yeah, because and that's it's, just water I put in. I don't put antifreeze in it. So it's been eight years since yeah. I, I dropped this off. And uh, other than that, I think we did a water pump on it at one point. We're doing your thing. So a little backstory. They went to go do some travel and they wanted a vehicle that they can do local trips. Well, then they went from Florida to Michigan yeah. and back <laughs> in the middle of it. The water pump failed, but parts are hard to come by on this. It's not like you're, you know, your average V8 Chevy and you're trying to chase parts in the middle right. of anywhere. This is a, a different animal just because it's uniqueness. And now it's, it's a 1988 or 87. What year is it? 88. 88. So, you know, it's, uh, we do my math for 33 years old. But I'm saying it, yeah. it was riding okay and stuff like that. You know, really, it's just, uh, I don't have the stuff to put into it and, and all the time, like you do, you know? You just try to, oh crap, your mother's down here. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you're going to fill up a few totes purging this out. It'll probably come up another half inch or so. Suspension wise, <laughs> just for all the junk that's in it. So now then transmission fluid, the other problem is, I haven't pushed the pedal yet. Oh yeah. Well, it's not as low as I expected you to say. You said it went all the way to the floor. Yeah. It's low, but I wouldn't say it's all the way to the floor. Yeah, it stops and stuff, you know. But I wouldn't let your mother drive it. Yeah. I, I wonder if you lost a circuit. Let me give a... Yeah, it feels like a circuit's missing. Like the rear circuit's possibly not doing anything. Hmm. But you don't... It's probably crawl underneath. We'll, we're, gonna get, we're gonna get up on ramps and look underneath it. Put some wood down. We'll see what we got going on. Okay. I'll just put the wood here. Then you just back up on the ramp. Is that what you want to do? Sounds like a plan. And we're underneath. Some oil dripping there. I think yeah. The rest is the 
experience is leaking a little. I'm looking for trying to figure out what we have for a brake issue. I have been feeling it's the master cylinder. If we don't have any leaks, it feels like it. When you fire it up, the pedal definitely goes right to the floor. You only have one circuit. So I lost one of them. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, the wheels look dry. Generally, you would see a puddle kind of coming down from one of the wheels. Try bleeding it too. I'm gonna go see what it's got in the reservoir for the master cylinder. So I found our reservoir is right under here for the master cylinder. We're supposed to be able to pull up on this cover. I don't know if I could do this one-handed or not. Yeah, let me grab it with two hands. I don't want to break the plastic. We'll pop that off and we'll see what we got for fluid. We're in. Yeah, let's get that out of our way. And that's our reservoir. I think we are super low on fluid. I would hope that we, if we can just bleed the brakes, I could deal with it when I get home. It would be awesome. Instead of trying to deal with it in a driveway with marginal tools. But we still have to find out where the brake fluid went, so it's not like it just totally disappeared. There we go. Screw with figuring out what the combination is on that, getting that out of our way. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely nothing in the reservoir. Well, as I say, as long as you get a pedal back to be safe to drive, I'll be happy with that. If you got a slow leak, I can deal with that at home. We'll fire it up. What happened was when I fired it up, the, the brake pedal really got bad. Let me show you. So now you hit it. It goes right, right to the point where it clunks. There's nothing there. I said, I looked real quick at the wheels. I don't see anything leaking uh, when we put fluid in it that will uh, definitely show up, hopefully. If not, sometimes what happens too, the back of the master cylinder, seal on the back of the master cylinder, leaks and it goes right into the diaphragm, the, the brake booster, and the brake booster will hold the fluid in it. Eventually it rots out the booster too, but that might be where it's going. And it's just a guess on my part, so. Uh, I don't think the booster is blown yet because if that was the case when you hit the brake pedal, it makes a big vacuum leak and the engine will rev real high when it does that and it's not doing that right now, so. After I have my coffee, I'm gonna go run to the parts store, we'll grab some brake fluid. I have probably some oil, some transmission fluid, a couple of things like that. Let's see how well this works, see if it can make a mess. There you got it. I don't know if I got it's so clear it's hard to see. Would you lift that up, yeah? Yeah, we got some. Let me go let me go uh I see it running down and fill a little bit more. Let's go uh, hit that brake pedal, see where it goes, see if that pedal comes back. See me dumping that over. And let's go fire it up. I wouldn't exactly say it's uh, pumping up. <laughs> no. Uh, We'll keep hitting it though, we'll see if it makes a pile somewhere. And see if we can find a, maybe a broken brake line or something. Ooh. You have to bleed it though, don't you? Won't you? Uh, yeah, but it should have like pumped up a little bit. See if we see anything wet anywhere. That's the next step is us bleeding it out. There we go. See if we can grab a wrench, we'll grab a bleeder and see if we can get anything to happen. I think it's the rear circuit that's out, it kind of feels that way. Pump three times and hold it. Yeah, we're not getting much of an alien there. Go ahead, pump it three times and hold it. Give it a little bit of time when it comes all the way up, Dad. Okay. Do it again. Oh, I feel a little resistance on it. Okay. I'm holding down. Yeah. Do it again. I'm getting 
pressure though. There we go. Now we got something kind of coming. Okay, do it again. Okay, do it again. Wow, that went down. Good. Do it again. There we go. Now we're getting air. Good. Do it again. Ah, there we go. Okay, do it again. And now we're getting good. We'll do one more time. Okay. Right. Good. Keep it up. Yeah. I'm going to go top it off and we'll do the other wheel. I think the next thing on the agenda is going to get some coolant out of it because right now it's just uh, straight water. Again, it never freezes over here. Uh, I'm probably going to go break it right here. It has hoses that run the radiators all the way in the front, of course, the you know, the engine's all the way in the back, so it has to transfer it. I'm guessing that's probably going to be our best place to try to break it. See what we can get out of it. We can get like a half a gallon to a gallon out of it. I'll put straight antifreeze in it and let it cycle. I'm going to go purge all that stuff when I get home anyway. So we're just trying to make it so that when I drive up north and I'm in the freezing weather, when I park at nighttime, I don't crack anything. So that's our, our goal. Let's go get that out of there and uh, see what comes out of it. Grabbed a bunch of hoses too, just in case we do break something. I don't know if I have this one, but actually that clamp does not look like it's gonna recover very well. <laughs> I'm gonna stab myself in the hand when I slip off, ain't I? If I have a socket that'll fit on that. Yeah. Just rounding that off. You know that was little suitcase socket sets you have it's kind of has a little bit of everything in it i have one of those it's 1400 miles the other direction so i am working with what i got okay. here you go and it's sitting nice and comfy in my truck and i was supposed to bring that with me <laughs> no ratchet. This is what was in my dad's stash. It was this funky uh, extension with no head on it. But at least we have that, right? I'd be trying to get it with vice grips by itself and rounding it off. Not that we can't get another clamp, but I'm trying to. All this stuff is plastic uh, pipe, this right here that it's connected to. So I want to be gingerly when I. That to come off of there. Because of that, I may have a little bit of a problem trying to get. So. Worst case, I go buy myself a little Harbor Freight quarter inch drive. I got three A's, I brought three A's. But I seem to remember saying, yeah, I'll bring that kit with me. I'll have everything I need inside there. No, no. <laughs> there we go. Now you think the chances are we'll be able to get that to ever get a little spin on her. Might have to try to tap a screwdriver up in there. Oh, there it goes. Got a little bit of color to it. Looks like I have a little bit of antifreeze. Let that gush out of there. I don't have one of those testers neither. You know the ones you can go test the the quality of uh, the fluid. And it smells pretty much like water. I don't smell much antifreeze in it. Probably gonna go fire it up and I'm gonna go let it burp some more out of there. Watch your face. I don't know what's gonna happen. I 
that looked uneventful, did it? It's draining though. I'll probably let that go and I'll see what I get in the, the bucket here. Whatever I get out of it is what I can put back in. So right now it only feels about maybe about a quart. I'd like to get a gallon out of it. I'm gonna go open up some caps up top and see if it is like holding it. Like when you put a your thumb over a straw, you pick it out of liquid and it holds it. If I take the cap off, maybe it'll flow a little bit. That ought to work. I just cracked the cap. That should be good enough. I think we got about three quarters of a gallon at least. I'm not sure how much it holds. My guess is maybe two. These are, are pretty much air-cooled engines that the cylinder heads they just adapted to water cooled so it's not like it cools the block there's no passages down below it's just up in the cylinder heads around the jugs actually I shouldn't even say the cylinder heads just around the jugs so possibly I can get it with a regular screwdriver now get that off of there I'll tighten that back up and we'll get some other fluid in it we gotta figure out how to burp the system too. get the air out that actually has a decent green tint. Like I said, I don't, I don't have one of those testers. I don't think that's going to freeze on us, but we're still going to go top it off with 100% of the other stuff. I'd say we got, yeah, about three quarters of a gallon, maybe a gallon. Find out what I poured into the old one, how much it takes. So it has a weird cooling system. It's very kind of hard to explain. So it has a, a reservoir you put some in. This is like a... I wouldn't even say expansion tank, it kind of like where it recirculates from. Then it has a recirculation system up here. Then in the front there's a radiator, and then that has a, a bleeder on it too. I think there's a bleeder right here also. So you gotta have to kind of dance around. You actually have to tilt the vehicle, get all the air to go to one way, bleed it out of the radiator, go the other way, you bleed it out of back here. Hopefully the radiator part of it stayed and we're able to fill it back up and it'll work. If not, I'll have to go do that dance. So let me go get some some fresh stuff put in there. So we got Toyota antifreeze. Let's see how that's gonna work for us. Nice little pink. She's a lady. There we go. Get a bunch of that in there. We're probably gonna do, I'll test drive it. I'm gonna run it around. I wanna check the transmission fluid. I think that's probably low too. So this bottle gets burped all the way to the very top. There's no air space in this. And then the little bottle on the side is the one that you kind of maintain a couple inches in the bottom of it. This was a, a full gallon I started with. Let's see what we got. We are about two inches from the top right now. I know I'm going to overfill it. Almost. So it's going to take the whole thing, which is good. It's about as much as I took out. So maybe I won't have to bleed the air out. Getting close. Didn't even spill a drop. Yeah. Okay, so this cap threads onto there and it's a sealed unit and then it has a little little hose that goes over to the expansion bottle and that one gets tightened up. So we'll go tighten that up, we'll fire it up, run it, we'll kind of let it burp its system out. We're gonna go see what's in here. We fill that through the license plate, the one that's down over here. We fill this one through the license plate and that one maintains a level about, about that high. Yeah, and here's the other one. Just pop the cap off. I'm going to go fill that up to the high level because I know it's going to burp itself down. Looks like there's straight water in it now. On our right, that's our temp gauge right here. And this engine, I had to take this engine apart before because what happens is the heads start leaking and well, they start sucking air. And what happens is the radiator in the front 
the water level ends up going down, it gets trapped, a bunch of air trapped on top, it no longer cools and it'll have like a warning light that goes off when that starts to happen. And hopefully that does not happen to us on the way home. We got a good brake pedal now. Go get it down off of the uh, ramps. I have the brake brake on. <laughs> they just slid right out. I'm gonna go pull this forward. I'm gonna butt everything up. I'm gonna go let it warm up. I'm gonna check the trans fluid. I'll put that in it, and then we'll take it on a test drive and see how it warms up. Make sure that we get a, a decent level there. Yeah, we got nothing. We're supposed to be between those two, and it's way down there. We're gonna go dump a quart in it, see how it does. It's burping itself through the air coming out of it. See it up there too. I may have to do some bleeding. Let's see how it irons out. We're gonna run it a little bit. I know there is a bleeder here. Gotta go look up how to do it and how to remember how to do it. So I'm gonna shut it off, see how much airspace I have in there. I'm gonna take that back apart, fill that back up to the top again, get rid of that. Looks like most of the bubbles have stopped. Yeah, it's been idling in the yard in about 10, 15 minutes. And that's about where it is. I think it goes up a little bit further and an electric fan's gonna kick on. It's obnoxiously loud. But let's go do it for a little road test. See how things are doing. Give ourselves a listen to all the Any other issues going on, like a bad wheel bearing or something I don't want to have to try to deal with on the side of the road, you know? It does sound a little on the growly side back there. Our brakes are. Brakes are good. Oh, the refrigerator door's open. That, that's the refrigerator door. <laughs> let's go take her on, give her some highway speed. See how it does. Let's floor it. From 380 horsepower on the way down to 80 horsepower on the way back. And I think that's even being generous as far as that's concerned. And let's go take around some uh, wide open spaces. See how it is. Full throttle. <laughs> Seems like it shifts fine. Should probably put the window up for road noise, huh? There we go. It seems decent. We're cruising at 55. There's a, uh, I'm gonna flip over to a bigger road in a minute. When I drove it down, again, eight years ago, it, it did okay, like 70, you can cruise 70 mile an hour, you know, for VW buses, that's probably the holy grail. But being an automatic, it, it seemed like it did fine, it just doesn't have a lot of snot, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure how well it's gonna be pulling hills and that kind of thing, so.
Got about the same amount of miles that the Sequoia has on it. 150 thou. The Sequoia is like 150, 148. A little top heavy. I know in the winds this thing gets pushed around a lot. But you're on a straightaway, you can let go of the wheel. It, it uh, tracks pretty good. But it's, it's still gonna be, everything's gonna need to be gone through. You know, it's gonna need tires. Tires are eight, 10 years old. Yeah, it's about, even though the tread's not wore out on them, they start getting dry, rotty and crap. So. So we got coolant taken care of. We got a brake pedal again. Brake pedals aren't great. East, you know, well, kind of used to modern cars too, but you hit them, they, I wouldn't exactly say you're going to lock them up, maybe with a lot of force you'll lock them up, but it just kind of slows its way down. And top the transmission off. So I'm going to go run it around again. I, I got another six days before I'm going to start making the trek back. So I'm going to use this around town, just make sure there's no issues with it that be better to deal with at my parents' house instead of either on the side of the road or a rest stop trying to change something out and I brought a bunch of goodies with me so I, I have all kinds of stuff at least something to work with in case I do have an issue duct tape and tie wraps should fix it so we're definitely pushing transmission fluid out like you under there right where that coupler is up there it looks like it's leaking dripping down around the motor mount you can see it actively Right there. So after that cools on, I'm gonna throw some hose clamps, uh, some screwdrivers on those hose clamps. See if we can slow that down. That might be actually where it's leaking from. And I thought it was leaking backwards towards the flywheel and dripping out. You see it smoking. You see it on the physically on the muffler itself, dripping. Yeah, it might take a couple of ten quarts of fluid on the way home if we don't fix that. Well, those stains up front, I don't know if you can see them. That's after the net, last test drive and tighten those clamps up. Definitely got better, but it's still leaking. I'm not gonna be that concerned about it. We'll just keep an eye on it. And I have a couple of quarts to bring home and stop for gas. Check the tranny fluid, we'll give her a little bit of fill. I'm getting ready to go and of course the weather report is a nor'easter coming through all the way up on the east coast good thing i only have to drive the east coast all the way back up to new hampshire from florida so my dad came out with a shovel and some uh, windshield washer fluid that isn't straight water that is in it now so i gotta go figure out where the windshield washer fluid is change that out for some of that so that it does not freeze on me when i need it most Looking like plain water to me. Sounded kind of sick though. I think it's running out. I think that was all of it. Huh? That was all of it. That was it, huh? <laughs> Found it under your feet. <laughs> I'm being followed. <laughs> I'm gonna see if the back has anything in it. Yeah, that's got any freeze in it too. Okay, we're just worried about it freezing on the way back and cracking something. That would be good. I just gave you a little pot and you can make some soup. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Oh. I drew it up there, it seems like it's got color to it. Okay. As long as it doesn't freeze. I'm not that concerned about what's behind me, just what's forward. Any parting words of you losing your car? Well, you gained one though. So. I'm gonna miss it though. Yeah, that was my truck. Yeah. You know, I won't be able to get more dirt. And... Yes, you will. That's got bigger I, backs. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so. the floor is a lot leveler there. Well, I could put it up on. You top. put a box on top. You'll be good. <laughs> yeah, put a box on top. So you had it for eight years. Yeah. 
You tried to go, you, you were going to take local trips in it, local trips. We took local We took and then all you, the way up to the north, yeah. over to Michigan. Okay. And 11, I wonder if I can get this off of here. How am I going to get through the tolls? I'll get it. <laughs> let, me, let me try. Let me get a razor blade. All right. In another person's world, a little bit, and this was a huge part of that. Your love for Volkswagens fell over. To well, you us. guys started it. You had a '68 Beetle. <laughs> yeah, we did. We, well, that was our first new car, mm -hmm. and we had the the '67, I think. '68. Was it '68? Green '68. And it was sixteen hundred dollars. And the back windows didn't roll down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm climbing in the very back of the car, and I look at that space now. I said, huh? <laughs> yeah, you kids, you kids got sick all the time back there. Ow. The windows didn't roll down. I know. It, Just it, remember, you don't have an eight-cylinder going there now. I said, I'm going. You don't have the big tigers and all the other kind of stuff. Well, it. that's why I'm concerned. I, I really. He'll be know, careful. Wish you just wait a day. It's only two feet of snow. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the wind does get it. But no, it's it, Darren. I. There's so much selfishness in the world today, and it's so refreshing to see how far you have come in so many ways. And I'm so proud of you. Dad is too, in everything. And you're sharing it. Sometimes people, when they start to make it in the world, they feel that they've outgrown people in their lives. And you haven't, you've taken us with you. So thank you for that. And because I, when you. <laughs> when you wake up, I'm liable to be in the back. <laughs> hey, you guys came with me. Hey. <laughs> I hope you brought a coat. <laughs> oh, no, Darren, you've been very good for us, and thank you very I, much. I feel I awful, but I wanted to take you out to eat all these meals, and you treated yesterday and again today, and you know, it's, uh, you did so much. I'm glad I can do it. Well, I know you are. Thank you. All right, let's start with the... You made of the right stuff, honey. It doesn't go unappreciated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love you, Mom. We've got zero miles on the odometer, and it's just starting to rain. Perfect. And that first stop, and we're a little bit below a half a tank. We just want to check on things. We've got 125 miles in, and uh, we're in Georgia. Georgia. Let's see how things are looking. A little smoky. I think we are still spitting some tranny fluid. Well, I don't see it pouring on the ground, so I'm happy about that. We'll see when it sets. But you definitely can smell like burnt oil. I see it all sputtering around the, the bumper. <laughs> Try following that for an hour. I get you hypnotized. Yeah, I can't see either. Yeah, what about another uh, 190? To go re gas, pull in the gas station. And I'm pretty sure what, why I decided to I had up to 2000 RPM. Hmm. That'll fix it. I'm in the south. We got some bojangles, bojangles, chicken, mashed potatoes, and I think that is what kind of bread that is. Pretty good for uh, gas station food, I guess. Best gas station chicken I've ever had. My guess is they're expecting a lot of power to go out. I think it's supposed to be like 100, 110 million people. Can we get hit by this storm? That's a few. So I see all the southern bucket trucks making their way up north for uh, one or two people that are going to lose power, I guess. 
Well, that's not a good sign. Strong smell of antifreeze. I got a leak somewhere, plus the engine, the uh, coolant light overheat came on. So I got something going on somewhere. And uh, I'm at a rest stop, at least it's got some light where I am. It's not downpouring. Let's go open her up, see what we got. Definitely pushing a lot of transmission fluid out too. I see that everywhere. I'm not quite sure what's happening as far as antifreeze. Hmm. My bottle has some air in it. The other part too is the up there the radiator gets air trapped in it also especially if it starts leaking if the head gaskets start failing it pumps air into the system and that was kind of what I was afraid of at one point. to pop that front grill out see if we can get some air out of it <clears throat> let it cool down is that fill bottle full this bottle is full that's kind of what's happening I think that's what's happening oops so I lose my phone <laughs> really watch it melt on the exhaust miles to go. It's really for this crap. Huh? Yeah, it's over full. seeing steam coming out of the top though that's weird might be just coming out of these vents maybe so I gotta get the grill off and right here there's a bleeder I can see if we can try to crack and get some air out of it what happens is that there's no it, the radiator will fill up with air it pushes the coolant down further further and further and then there's just no there's no coolant circulating through the radiator, and it causes it to overheat. Right. It's definitely where the adventure starts. Wrong wrench. I don't think it's 13, I think it's a 12. You know it's gonna be 11 if I don't bring 11 out with me. <clears throat> Watch me not have an 11. It is 13. Yeah, see the air coming out? Well, I'm 
I'm gonna run it. Turn the heat on. Come on, I'll help it. But what happens is it's just there gets air trapped around the uh, cylinder heads, so it just overheats. Let's go see what happens. Let's uh, that's the rear heat. The front we do not have. <laughs> Just died on me. I had no power at all. Just stalled. Okay, nothing. I just pulled out of the rest stop too. This is great. It's great. I don't think I'll be able to push it backwards. The has the lights on. I wanted to go push it backwards, I couldn't push it. And uh but go start it one more time and start it up. The rest stop a mile. So I'm shooting for that. It's really nothing. I, the rest stop had nothing. The next exit, I should, I should say, is a mile. Get off the highway though. Too bad it's not one with like 30,000 things at the exit. Yeah, I see the lights flashing with the overheat. It means the little float in the tank is seeing too much air. I don't know which way it's set for that gas station to the left or to the right. So of course I went the wrong way. I'm about I don't know, a couple miles from the highway. I'm going back there. So the bottle in the back, there's two things that make the light flash. One is you just plain overheating, and the other is if the bottle in the back there's a float in it that tells you there's not enough fluid in that bottle. And tell me that bottle has never enough fluid in it because it's getting air in the system and it pushes it in other directions. That's what I'm gandering. So I'm going to try getting back on the highway. I have the heat on, keep it under control. The only thing stays run, I'm going to try to boot it to the next exit that has a bunch of gas stations and that kind of stuff. And uh, maybe for the night, park it, deal with it when there's daylight. Or at least when it cools off, see if it can fill up that reservoir, bleed some more air out of it, kind of go from there. Again, we're, we're heading into a blizzard, so. <laughs> if an adventure doesn't kill you, it wasn't worth it, right? So, we'll see how this goes. Like I said, I'm, I'm a ways away yet, so we'll see how it goes. Back on the highway. It's like kind of four miles to the next town. And I had just pulled over to work on the seat. It wasn't even like I, I pulled over because I was having an issue at that rest stop. I just pulled in real quick to get there's a table behind the seat. I wanted to get that out of there. 
so I can kind of recline a little bit back further and went in and take a look. I took a look, took a leak. <laughs> Came back out and she was just poofing away. So it is what it is, right? It's an exit with no gas or lodging. <laughs> It's pretty much the same thing I was on there. Kind of maintaining the temp. Cruising her at 60. It's just that I don't want to be dead on the highway, you know? Because they're going to tow me immediately. Whereas I can go pull over and, you know, see, like, quite sure. How can I be able to remedy this? If the heads are sucking air, leaking around them, I'm kind of screwed. Guess we'll keep her going until we find something. Next edge, we got a budget inn and two gas stations. That is much better than 0.0. .0. I'm probably going to go roll into the Budgie Inn the parking lot. gas station to the right. All right. Well, looky here. You think sleep in the hotel parking lot or the gas station parking lot? Well, I would think that we can, okay, we can't drive it from one to the other. <laughs> I see that now. So, let's go hang out in the gas station parking lot. See what I can do. Those lights are loudspeakers. Like lights. Okay, tractor trailers over here. Let's go hang out with the truckers. We'll pretend we're a trucker. <laughs> it's like they're camped out for the night. There's a spotlight to work under. The thing is, I, I would suspect heavy rain's gonna hit us. Yeah, we're creeping up now that I slowed down. It's cranking on up. Let's uh. try bleeding there's a bleeder out back too I'm gonna try bleeding that see if we can get some of the air out of it yeah I'm just gonna let it cool down shut everything down plus I don't know where all the switches are I'm still learning that I wonder when it started revving high in that last gas station what was an indication that something was going kapooey yeah, watch right there it'll just gurgle at times Right there. Hmm. There's that other bleeder. I did let a little bit of air up. There wasn't much in there. Not as much as I thought as I would. Thought there would have been. I'm gonna try bleeding up by the radiator again too.
before I get out of there. I don't know how long it is. Radiator's not even hot. Which isn't good, that means there's no there's no fluid up here. <sighs> Only a thousand miles to go. I think we're gonna call it a break night for tonight. I'm gonna let her cool down and try to lean the bus way uphill on a, on a big incline, try to get whatever air I can out of the front, get some more fluid in it. See if I can get the, if there's any air that's trapped in it. I, I'm not having a great feeling about this though because I don't think I would have made 300 miles and then all of a sudden having an issue. I think it uh, has developed an issue and uh, <laughs> you know and it's the next morning now they can kind of see and right, I got here at 11 o'clock last night went for should I go for the gas station or should I go for the hotel I went for the gas station and it is dead it does not run will not start so it's got two problems going on. I think one of the heads let go and we're pumping air into the cooling system. And then I think I lost something either electrical or fuel injection for it not to run. So I got a room across the street and I got to put a plan together on what I'm going to do and how I'm going to go get home. They do have a place to eat there. That's it. That's the whole town I think. You have a hotel and then a gas station with a grill. So at least there's food. I have a feeling I might be here for a couple of days. Let's <laughs> see what happens. And home crap home. <laughs> $112 hotel room. And at least I had internet. I was able to get on there and procure a U-Haul uh, truck and trailer. Unfortunately, it's about 40 miles away. So I had to figure out how to get from here to there. Here is Terryville, something like that. And I have to go to Dillon, South Carolina. So those are my two locations that I gotta go make the, the jump on. And across the street, is our, where our bus is parked. See where those FedEx trucks are? On the back side of those, or down the field, down there. So I get to go hibernate, I get, don't have a choice. I have no way to get around, I'm stuck here. And uh, trying to, again, put a ride together. We'll see how that works out for us. But hopefully we can kind of continue this journey and uh, head up into the snowy north where uh, 18 inches of snow are supposed to be getting at my house. Well, oh, not like I need to go travel through any of that. The area where it's really snowing hard now is where you're seeing this dark blue shading. I gotta go from down there radar estimated snow to up there. <laughs> right through that. This is one of those fine quality establishments. It has a key pass. You don't need it. <laughs> Doesn't work. One key fits all. So Doug was so nice. Say hi, Doug. People, Doug. Doug. Out there. <laughs> I think that is my truck right there. And hopefully somewhere in here, there it is, is a trailer that can get me home. Oh yeah. That says a max speed of 55 miles an hour and <laughs> we will definitely abide by that. I can tell you not. You think <laughs> we're gonna fall off into oblivion? <laughs> it's kind of exciting. I don't mean to where the office is. You think that's the office over there? Yeah. Well, unless that is. Yeah, right? Or... I think that's gonna be our... Okay, I just, if it goes... If there is an office. Yeah, I'm not sure that that... Maybe they're building it right now. Yeah, Maybe that's the, it. I'm not sure the come along would get us out of... <laughs> if it would fall off. Okay. Yeah, let's go see what happens here. Yeah. 
We can do a little walk around and see if there's any damage on the truck. It's got a hit. It's got a hit up high. It's got rust on it. Oh, I think it's already had a little X on it saying. Look for bodies? Yeah, check for bodies. Oh, no. I'll just go put that truck right in here. Yeah. <laughs> Good That's a good place to sleep if I pull over to rest stop. Yeah. Got a big scratch down the side. Scratching the bumper, dent in the bumper. Yeah. I think that's about it. I don't know if we see anything else. South yeah. Carolina doesn't have front license plates. So you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Actually, if we go hook up to the trailer, let's see what the trailer looks like. Yeah. You got brakes. Yep. Yep. A little bending going on there. I think you're good. The junkyard dog is after us. <laughs> Looks like we just tied the two front tires down and that's it. Kind of a strange. I guess we'll go with that. <laughs> One way or another, it's going on there. Don't have a choice. <laughs> Doesn't drive bad. Cruises S70 nicely. If we had 20,367 is what we started for miles. And I think they had a lot of be like 1,200 miles to get there. It was a thousand bucks to rent it not including fuel and they're gonna try to hit me up on the other end for any charges we'll find out but hopefully not at this point I just want to get home <laughs> I'm tired deal with the blizzard on the other end I had a friend come and fly out the driveway we got I think 14 inches of snow and uh, more on the way today is I don't even know what today is I'm gonna guess today is Wednesday I think Thursday, Friday, or Friday, Saturday, we're supposed to get snow again, so I may try and book it all the way home. Say I got a thousand miles to go yet, so say average 60 miles an hour. It's a good 18 hours of driving, maybe. How's my math? Don't worry, my little friend. We are here to save you. Hopefully. <laughs> as long as we can get you on the trailer with a come along. Good. What do you think the chances are? I put the key in and it starts up. I'm not giving it very good. I was hoping something got wet from all that driving through that water that it may have screwed something up and it dried out. But I'm not thinking so. I can do a better job getting straight on it than that. Chances are. Oh, did it go start? <laughs> that would be a no. Whatever's ill is still ill. I was hoping something was wet and it was going to come back, but uh, oh well. So, this is our plan. There's a hook on the front I was able to hook onto, but there's not much on the trailer except for these little holes. So, I got a bolt with a washer and a washer on the bottom. Hopefully, that holds maybe about two or three resets and we got a roll of paper towels to put behind the tire to keep it from rolling into the marsh in case we lose it. <laughs> so, wish us luck. So far, so good. It's taking the weight. It's gonna. Yeah, it seems we, to. When we get to the top of the ramp, that's where it's really gonna get us because now all four tires are probably gonna be trying to go uphill. Uh, we'll see.
As a joke, I said to him, let's go see if it starts. I hop in. Let's not do it. <laughs> but it did. Nice. <laughs> Use my witness. Fire it up and it died. I recorded it. I think that's some shit. Oh well. <laughs> we get drove it on. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you want this. Or... <laughs> Shop call. There you go. Yeah. Murphy's Law, right? Figures. <sighs> yep. South of the border. We're at South of the border. Oh, I love that place. <laughs> Dude, go get some fireworks. They have the best fireworks. It's uh, looking a little dead right now. There's not much happening. I love that place. I used to make my dad let me go in. I bought these little tanks. It's exit one. So we are now another state down. I think we're in North Carolina. Well, I guess the big threat of the storm is over and the power outages because I've seen about probably about a hundred bucket trucks already come by from the other way. They're all going back down south again, going back home. Look at these guys over here. Yeah. First signs of snow. Jumped onto 288, which is cutting back over. I'm gonna take the mountain range back home again. Now the snowstorm's over with. I just don't feel like trying to drive through Washington and all the it's it's a mishmash of mage of road down through that area. A lot of traffic too. I'm right at rush hour. I think that's I don't know what time it is. It's clocking here. So 5:46 right now. That's what time it is. So this cuts over to 64. 64 goes up to 81, and 81 all the way across to 84 and home. But yeah, we're starting to see as we're going up in elevation, we're starting to see some snow on the sides of the roads. And I think at some point we get up to uh, almost a couple feet of it. I don't know what's left of it now, but that's what had happened. That I got to miss. I didn't get to drive through it. Shucks. I'll bring you back when we got a decent amount of snow. Well, I was shooting for a friend's house. It's uh, 10 p.m. I would have made it there at 1.46 a.m. 2 a.m. I got another gas run. But getting a little sleepy eyes. So I think I can go pull over, see if I can go close them for 10, 15 minutes or six or seven hours. <laughs> see which one wins and uh, go from there. A little bit of more snow, huh? Yeah, my ETA is what, 20 minutes later? Back on the road. All the trucks pulled over, resting too. All the truck spots were taken, they had cars and trucks. I pulled into where the cars were kind of left it running though, with the lights on for a few minutes. That's all. Sometimes I just need about like 5-10 minutes. I, I, I can zonk out pretty quick. Pretty easy. That re rejuvenates me. And now, unfortunately, it's snowing. And this rig <laughs> got nothing in the box. Two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, and pulling a trailer with highway tires on it. So if this starts accumulating on the road, I gotta bail pull over. Give it a, I give it a little bit longer. See what happens. We're gonna stop on the other. 
the side. See how crowded it is. They're not even in the rest stop. It's the honor ramp. See that snow blowing across? That's what's having me bail. It's getting a little kind of slippery. Even right now, I'm not getting traction, trying to move forward. So, I'm gonna find a parking spot, chill for a while. Down here is a bunch of turn left, then turn right. Diners and that kind of thing, gas stations, hotel parking lots. One of them will suit me. I may go back in the camper. There's a bed back there. It's gonna be on the cool side. It's 28 degrees out. I think that's where I'm gonna hibernate for a few hours. Let this blow over. I looked on my phone for the snow alert and it says it's gonna go on for the next four or five hours. So, although there was a nice warm bed waiting for me at a friend's house. In one half mile, turn right and make a U-turn. I think, um, this might be the better decision <laughs> before I end up on a pile on the side of the road. There was a tractor trailer on an on-ramp. That was jackknife. So. In 500 feet, make a U-turn, then turn left. When possible, make a U-turn, then turn left. Says you. I'm pulling over. She's getting slippery. Uh, break time. Yeah, too slippery for me. At least this will blow over. She's got the snow on the top of this truck. Okay, quite a few have that look to it. A little rooster tail on the end. Now the roads are still all covered. I looked at my phone. It originally was supposed to stop by about 7 a.m., which is now. And now it shows through noontime, the same thing. I may just go venture out. You'll notice that there's not a single vehicle out there towing a trailer. <laughs> yeah, tractor trailers, yeah, but you don't see anybody towing a trailer. I've not seen one since. It's not a great idea. I'm hoping that the main highway is gonna be better than this access road. I have also not seen a plow or a salter or anything. The first plow I've seen. Good, because that's a road I need to get out. Well, I got kicked out of there. So we're going to go try motoring a little bit, I guess. Oof. This sucks. So I was in that parking lot for, I don't know, 10 hours or so, hoping it was going to get better. And it, it, as you can see, it didn't. Uh, but the road does not look terrible. Hopefully there's got a bunch of salt down. And we're just going to try to go cruise through, get out of this mountain range the best I can. Hopefully not jackknife or have a big truck go by me and blow me off the, the road. So that's what I'm dealing with right now. I have half a mind to fill the box truck with snow just to get some weight in the ass end of it. <laughs> you watch great positions with me right now? Right. Later. Hmm. I think somebody done got her sideways. We are all stop and I gotta pee <laughs> I'll climb in the box truck in the back and go 
We're moving. It's actually somebody else was pulling the trailer. The first one I've seen in two hours. So I'm not quite sure what happened. We're gonna get up over this hill and I guess find out. I stopped for I don't know, about a half an hour. We were stopped. Dead stop. Nothing came down the shoulder, not that it could anyway. They probably came from the off-ramp if they had to go tow something. Off-ramp ahead, came backwards and grabbed it. I saw nothing. I don't see anything up in a rest stop. They towed off the road, but saw no marks in the snow, nothing. Maybe they just stopped traffic for uh, some road maintenance. Hard to tell. Where you need a CB. salt up here, can you tell? Place view. And stopped again. This one had a sign posted that there was an accident though. I'm not sure what lane is the better one, probably the right one. That one's down in the tumbleweeds, boy. Yeah. That one's gonna be there a while, huh? What I was afraid of happening to me. About a thousand miles in. Looking a little dirtier. I see a diner across the road. I think it's uh, time for breakfast, although it's about two o'clock. Yeah, that wasn't so bad, now was it? Yeah, sure. All right, now that we're back at home base, what do you think our chances are? <laughs> it's been very temperamental about firing up. I know the battery's gonna be getting dead, so I want to drive it off the trailer and into the shop. And of course, no. Oh, and it died. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna. Hitting gas does nothing, it's fuel injected, that doesn't really make any difference. It's not like a carburetor where it needs gas to go. But uh, I guess we can, maybe we can try to go figure out what is causing that. I just gave a teaser right there. Whether it's fuel related or spark related, it's probably we've got to go figure figure out. Um, might be able to get underneath and put a jump button on the starter so we can crank it, leave the key on and you know check out back what's going on. So I sent up the uh, Batmobile VW flag in the sky. Yeah, I received it. It was right out about <laughs> there. Seen it. And um, we are going to, before we take off the trail and try to bring it in, we're going to go throw a plug on one of the cylinders and just kind of keep an eye out, see what it does, see if it's spark or fuel. And at least I'll have a, a uh, general idea of how to go chase it. And also, uh, possibly we could back the trailer right up to the lift and roll it onto the lift so I can work on it in a little bit more comfortable location than what we have right here. So, give me a second and we'll get a plug in there. We'll put it up and see if we got spark. Brian's gonna crank her for us. It might start too, so. Go for it. No spark. Okay. No spark. So, in a weird way, I think I'd rather chase no spark than no fuel. Yeah, huh. I agree. I wonder if I can, uh, Put power. Where's the coil on this thing? Yeah. Or if it's not getting a signal from the distributor, but it's not gonna have points. It's got 
a uh, CDI setup in it. So our coil is down there. I'm gonna go try. I found, I found this for you, sir. This man. There you go. Just so happened to have one of those on hand. <laughs> I gotta figure out where to get power. The battery's not back here. It's up under the passenger seat. Maybe the jumper pack. I'll go grab it. Brian, Brian's just gonna go turn the key on for me. Go for it. And I'm gonna see if I got power turned off. On. All right. Hold on one second. Let me go check again. Cranker. And now it's got. It's so in a minute. It's on and off. On and off. Uh, let's go pop the distributor. Again, it did go through heavy rains. And I know some people are saying, well, if you would have fixed this right there, you could have kept driving. It has other major issues with the overheating problem. There's two problems going on at the same time. And although it may have fixed this one so it was able to drive a little bit, it was still pretty much screwed. I think that has a little dovetail that comes off of it. There it goes. Yeah, it's all electronic condition. It's all dry. Get out of here. Yeah. There's also a computer in this thing. I don't think the computer does a great deal for spark anyway. I'm going to go put it all back together and we're going to go put a jumper to the coil. And just so we know it has constant power. See, one side of the coil has power and the other side has a signal coming from the distributor on off signal coming out of the, the wires out of there to tell it to have spark when to spark from the, uh, from the pickup that was under there. None of that stuff's in great shape, but and I've got 12 volts going to it from a jumper pack right now to energize the coil. Let's see what that does if you get a constant spark. Yeah, it still might not even be the issue, but... All right, Brian, give it a crank. No spark. All right. No spark again. So that's what it is. It's intermittent spark. It doesn't do anything. That's just ground for noise. All right. I think I screwed enough with it out here. I think we go bring it inside where the nice, comfortable weather is. No one's going to steal it. It won't let me go. It literally takes off the throttle. Oh, this is floored. That's floored right now. Do it. No, it's doing good. <laughs> That's it. You're doing good. <laughs> You're doing good. You can't even rock it out of the snow. Maybe try neutral and we'll hook a real truck to the trailer and just pull back a little bit and see what happens. Off. Oh yeah, that's helping. Yeah. Oh, there's got a little smoke. Got a little smoke. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. It smell. It's starting to smell like go. traction. Got it. it smells smoke. That's traction, sir. <laughs> traction. Good. I'll do 
all this and it won't be lined up to the lift. You're close. Never lift. That's about as close as I can get her. Let's go put the lift up. See how we make out. I knew where the camera was and it just started. <laughs> if, you could, it if you could smell it, we could have almost drove it backwards. Almost. I think that flight still too. Uh, it's only it was it only starts on three. <sighs> It's squealing a belt. You probably try to charge the battery up, is my guess. Mm. Let's try it again, see what happens. Okay. Probably won't ever start again now that I have the camera on, well, sir. You've been doing that to me the whole time. Right on. Drive it home today. It could be yours. Twenty nine ninety nine ninety five. Might as well just drive her back, sir. I'll let you know if something bad happens. Oh, uh, <laughs> take two. Take two. Keep her coming. Right, over. Yeah. What do you, mean by half of the you gotta kinda move the back end that way a little bit. You're good. Yeah, that's good. That's running on three cylinders considering we didn't put one of those spark plug wires back on. They had four spark plugs. <laughs> I think that license plate may have expired about a year ago. Well guys, I think we're gonna go wrap this one up here. It's a different kind of video, not the normal wrenching style that I normally do, but I think I'd share this uh, a little adventure that I had going on with this one and didn't know how it was going to turn out. And of course it did have some, uh, uh, bumps in the road, so to speak going through, but we worked through it. I'm home. It made it. Of course, now it runs and drives all over again. Although it does still have the issues with the engine as far as, uh, pushing air into the cooling system, which is the primary thing. You know, the secondary is that spark on and off, uh, 
could be a little hard to chase down because of the fact that it's intermittent. It's not staying uh, failed. If it just stayed failed, you could find the, the bad component. So I'm not sure what the process is going to be on this. There's some things that could be done. You do what's called a Subaru conversion. You take a Subaru engine, the bus motor out, VW engine out, you put a Subaru engine in it. They're uh, a tad more reliable and more horsepower. Don't know if they make a kit for that for a uh, automatic. I know they make a bell housing swap and clutch for the standards. I don't know. I got to go look in it and do some homework on that, see what we can find. But uh, that's for another day. And I have other projects that I'm still working on, which is more likely the kit car that's behind me. I still got to finish that. Uh, I just wanted to get this so that I can drive it in and out and park it in the garage. And it seems like it's recovered enough to go do that. It fires right up with the key now. <laughs> I don't think it wanted to leave Florida is what it really was. It was joining the nice weather. Now it's getting all salt covered again. And the other thing is, I just want to thank everybody for, uh, I put a uh, APB out on uh, the YouTube comments section down there as I needed help when I was stuck in Southern Florida and a whole bunch of you came up to uh, wanting to help and uh, Doug was uh, near in the area and he had to come along at his camp, went and grabbed that, picked me up the next day and uh, shuttled me back and forth and helped me get it on the trailer. I really appreciate his help very much and everybody else who had offered to do the same also. There's a whole bunch of guys with, you know, I live nearby, I have a trailer, I have a truck, I have this, whatever you need, let me know. Uh, so I really appreciate that, guys. I, b bottom of my heart, really do. Uh, thank you very much for uh, the uh, outpouring support. It, Help me being stuck. It's a weird feeling being on foot in some place that you're not familiar with. You know, it's not bad if you're in your local area, uh, you know, your local, say, a couple of states around you. But when you're 13, 1100 miles away from home, <laughs> it's a little on the different side. You don't have your normal resources that you normally do. And just for shits and giggles, let's see what it does. It's been in a couple hours. <laughs> Uh, female. I'm guessing one of those relays will be a culprit. Typically corrosion. Come on. We got a screwdriver. That's not a good sign. I'm willing to bet you right there. That's what failed. It's all puffed up in the middle too. Hmm. I didn't have one of them with me. Go pop the other one out next to it. Or if it's the same, we could swap them. What if one is spark and one is fuel injection? So we're going to the parts store. That's the one I took out of it, which is no longer available. We end up getting this one. And we figure out how that plugs back in. Let's go try this and see if it cures what ails it. It's a relay. And the one was in there with a 40 amp. I put a 50 amp in there. Shouldn't really matter. Let's go see if that helps cure any of its issues. Again, I'm not sure what the, the deal is with that one yet, but both of them hook up to the coil and we have no spark at times. Let's see if that cured it. Wasn't well, that. Huh. Pulled the wires off the coil. These are the power wires going to it, but I measured and saw I had power to it. Yeah, but there's a bunch of green on there. I'm going to see if we can get this whole assembly out of here. I'm going to go clean those contacts, put that back in, and also on the ground here. There's two grounds. I don't know if you can see that that lower one down there. See all the green crud growing on that? I'm going to go clean all those contacts too. Yeah, there's a coil out of it. You can see all the corrosion on both of them. I'm sure that's not helping. And then there's that 
that ground lug right there. So I'm gonna go take a minute, clean all that stuff up, and put it back together to see what we get. I know I'm just kind of poking and hoping, but again, it's an intermittent problem, so it's a little hard to pick out. And uh, sometimes you're just better chasing. Some of the obvious stuff that you see here and there, and those are not helping at all. Let's say at one time, the grounds next to it, I took apart and cleaned. You can see those right there where I, a little less light, the ones to the right, where I cleaned and wire wheeled some off a long time ago and did some work on. So I'm gonna go over both of those and probably be a good idea to put some uh, battery spray on them too. Yeah, and that was the ground bolt that was in it. I don't exactly say that was making good contact neither, huh? Hey, all those contacts are cleaned up. Let's see if we get. Nope. Kind of debating on the coil itself, maybe. So now the key is off, not even in it. But it's acting like the ignition is on. Our ignition, our ignition switch. That's just weird. Uh, that's funky. I should have that crappy coil on there. Took the other one off. It's not exactly the right one for it, but let's see what we get. That seems kind of testy, doesn't it? Wonder if it's just the how well it makes contact with the post underneath it. Obviously, it's opened up a little. Definitely seemed to have killed it though, huh? I tried that other relay, that other relay, although it has the same part number, it's not the same. It's got a, a diode in this one where the other one doesn't have it. So that one wouldn't work. Hey, what if that contact right there, right in front? I'm going to go see what I can do to improve that contact right there. Going in. And we're straight up. Straight up is with the VW emblem. That tap straight up.
I'm going to go look under the scope real quick and look at all those contact points and see if any of those are looking a little on the shady side. So I did not see anything on the relay. That's obvious anyway. But definitely if you wiggle it around, it kind of makes and breaks. I think we thought it was... I'm going to go give a little bit of a a bend on all of those. You can I just give them a little bit of more drag? A dent, if you will. Uh, it could only go in one way. He might still be gone. Is it? I'm not sure. Let me get that thing off. Gotta be gingerly because I have no cage to put on you, push on you. Know? Bolts. Innards are exposed. I don't know if we can. Yeef up on a few of those too, right? Hmm. Go fire it up, see what she does. You're gonna shake on the motor. I'm gonna, you'll shake a little bit, but you're actually not even gonna have light. Oh, we go put, yeah, give you some light. High budget operation here, you know. <laughs> you good? You see? All right, I'm gonna go crank it over. She starts. contacts up and I really should try to find a better relay of one of those again the one that I tried to go get doesn't do it it doesn't work correctly hmm the file points a little bit too but it, it just seems like it's very like I, I can influence influence it that's off that's how it turns it. <laughs> Gives itself a second. Not sure. So he said that was not available at the parts store. That they weren't able to get that one anymore. And that they were using the other one. But maybe in this instance that does not work. So I'm going to have to do a little homework online to see if we can get one of those. Either that or like I said it was those contacts underneath. Where I was pulling up on them. We were just not having a good cross on that. So I found our relay. And it's $559. I'm like, that's got to be a misprint. Why is it $559 with $48 shipping? And then I just did a, a paste and search. Not available. So it's like 50 bucks there out of stock. Got the next one. And it's 50 bucks there out of stock. And. Can you guess it? Out of stock. So it's made out of unobtainium. So I need to do the best I can to not damage the one that I have. And let me guess. This product is no longer available. <laughs> 
So it also says it runs the fan too. That it's used for the radiator fan. Maybe I could swap them around, and uh, you know, put one in the other location. I I think it, it's up by the grill. Was the relay for that? For the other one? I'll keep poking around a little bit. See if any of these kind of come out to where it's a, a usable setup. I think the problem is it doesn't have that. A lot of them don't have that uh, that diode right there in the circuit. I think that's what makes the difference how it operates. All right, so after a little bit of homework, we found out that that relay is no longer available, and the one that is available is five hundred and fifty-nine dollars, and we're not doing that. But what I did also find out is the and. Apparently, it, it, from 88 to 91 Bannigans is what they were used on. But the one for the fan, number 53, might be the same one. So I'm going to go pop that one out of there. If that's the same, we're going to swap their locations. Actually, we might be able to do it right now. Let's see if that's the same part number. It does not look the same as far as the uh, orientation. Yeah, it's a B and 7A. Yeah, it's not the same part number. Oh, well. So I am going to go take the one that we had, gingerly look it over, and do some repotting on the outside of it, probably with um, a glue gun. So I'm going to put the case back on and put it all back together, and we're going to go put that in and see if it maintains itself. Again, I wasn't sure if, if a post is loose and it was making, not making it, or the what you know where this kind of met the wire but from what little homework i did look up they were uh they had an issue with them people were having an issue where it was an intermittent failure and uh mine's no different apparently so wish me luck and before we take it apart let's see what it does all right so we'll we'll still run good Potting. As long as it keeps the weather out, I guess. Good. I think it's time we get rid of the squealies. Get this good. Already got loosened up. Get some tension on the alternator belt. That's enough to Make a dog run away, huh? That's better. Well, that stuff bolted back up to the side of the car. Let's go get this back in there. And hopefully I didn't put so much crap in there that it doesn't allow it to seat. We're gonna find out, right? See, she fires up. You stay right there and watch things. All right. I am going to go take everything and clean it up, get all the tools out of here. I am going to top off the antifreeze bottle, possibly bleed a little bit. You know, I'm not giving that much hope that that's going to recover. What I was thinking, though, is... So on the cylinder heads, and the problem, the other problem besides the, the no run condition was overheating on me. And it was pushing air into the cooling system. And then once air is in the cooling system, of course it doesn't cool due to the fact that uh, it's supposed to be water cooled, not air cooled. <laughs> so, uh, what well, I think I might try doing, there's a metal ring on the top of the cylinder between where the top of the cylinder meets the cylinder head. There's a metal ring that's in there. And on an air-cooled VW, you can just call it blow-by, and, and it doesn't really affect the run condition. It loses some compression, but, you know, it'll still go with it. What I may try doing with those 
what you do with those is you retorque the heads and you can kind of suck them down a little bit and sometimes it'll help seal them up. Sometimes if you catch it early enough, it goes away altogether. So I may try that on this. I, I don't know again much about the water-cooled setups, but it wouldn't hurt to try to retorque the heads, get a little bit better crush on them. Possibly it'll seal that leak up that was being an issue. But I'm going to go let it run and make it see if it'll re, uh, redo its problem that it had the, uh, when it left me stranded. We're running about 10... 10 minutes outside, it's still not warm yet. It's getting there, it'll let that creep up. Put the thermostat open up and build a little pressure. I'm gonna try bleeding the radiator. The thing with that is, you know, like, you know, kind of tilt the nose of the bus way up. I may drive it in on a lift and just lift the front two wheels off the ground or, or find a snowbank to drive it up into and give me that tilt. Hold right now. Look what it gets up to that where the dot is right below the high line there is where the electric fan will kick in. And let's see if it creeps up to that point and the fan does come on. Then I'm gonna try to get some air out of the radiator. See what that does for us. It's almost at that line right now. See what we get for air. I don't want it to come right out. There should be a hole or something on the side of it. Or it's just got no pressure. It doesn't help that it's like 33 degrees out so it's <laughs> not exactly a good one to get cooking hot. Well, I do see fluid coming out. So give that a second see if we get air there's air. It's air and fluid. Let's go plug that off. And I did bleed it really well before I left him and I made it like 370 miles. If it was an issue from changing fluid in it, it would have been fairly immediate, not six hours later, seven hours later, you know. Anyway, I'm gonna continue, let it, I feel a little bit of warmth in it. It's just a pain because there's also there's a front and rear heater core air gets trapped in them it's just <laughs> yeah, it's not a very, not a very good system for for how it's set up but what also helps is if you let it uh heat up let it get hot let it cool off and it can draw back in from the bottle it kind of like will burp itself as you cycle it from the overflow bottle into that secondary one so we try doing a little bit of that I should come out with a heat gun to show what it's doing but now you can feel some some heat in, in the rad and now it's warm and the uh, temp gauge went down that's a good sign that means it's doing what it's supposed to be doing closer to it anyway so let's retorque those cylinder heads and hope that's going to help us because right now it's just idling and the faster the engine revs the more pressure you're putting on those uh, gaskets those head gaskets those head gaskets are metal all the way around it's not like they have a a, uh, a soft material on them so it's not like they blew out and by retorquing them, you're not going to gain a seal back. There's nothing to blow away, uh, all intents and purposes. When, when, like normally, you see like a regular head gasket. It uh, that I don't know what you want to call that material that's on top of it, kind of like a, a aluminum powder, kind of impregnated into the gasket, is what blows out of the way and, and uh, causes a leak. That's not the good uh, situation with these. It's a totally different setup. So torquing may help. May not. He goes. And that originally did not come on until I bled the air out of it. So I think what it has on the radiator itself, it probably has a temp switch for the fan. And with no water up in the radiator, that fan was never going to come on. Yeah, stopped and had lunch at the diner, came out, it wouldn't start. I just whacked the relay, see if it'll... 
<laughs> Fortunately, I'm in walking distance to my shop. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so I definitely kept whacking it a little bit and came back, so it's definitely in the relay itself. At least it started. Well guys, I think we're gonna do a call it right there. I end up just jamming a piece of paper behind the contacts of the relay so the relay stays shut and it fires up every time. Whether it's gonna maintain that constantly, I don't know. But uh, I need one of those and it's pretty much what it comes down to. I tried to uh, phone a friend. He's looking in his stash to see if he has anything. Again, eventually I probably will find something. Worst case, what I'll do is, I'm not quite sure having that latched right now with the key off, what that is energizing. So worst case, what I'll do is I'll probably either tap the power wire going in, open it up and I'll run two wires to the front with a toggle switch. And when I run it, I'll uh, run it on and off for now. And just uh, make sure that everything else is okay with that part of it. And I'll just keep it local <laughs> so I don't get stranded. It does generate some heat because it, it melted off the, uh, was starting to melt off the glue gun material that I put down on the back side of it. It was uh, re-solidifying that. So I ended up picking that off and again, pulling the case off of it, looking on the inside of it. I may try tweaking it a little bit, getting the tab to kind of come in and you know clean the contacts. All that looks pretty good though. It's not like it has any issues with it. My guess is possibly maybe the diode underneath is failing on it and that is causing my problems again that's just guessing so with that guys i think we're gonna end it here it is what it is and um at least it's to the point where we can uh, local drive it uh and drive it in and out of my garage it's not uh, a push machine anymore or come along <laughs> winching onto a trailer machine with that ladies and gentlemen thanks for hanging out with me have a little bit of fun trying to uh, figure out what was going on with this until the next one i'll see you